my third WordCamp. Um, a little bit about me. I'm the director of online marketing at Co-Marketing. We're a B2B search marketing firm located here in Boston. Um, I have been in the search industry for eight years, so I feel really old. Um, I don't know how it happened. Um, I speak at several conferences, Ad Tech, SMX. Um, I'll be at the Dallas Digital, uh, Social Media Summit next month. Um, and, of course, WordCamp. One note. This presentation is on caseygillette.com. All the tools, links to all the tools, all the references, everything is linked from there. So if you want this presentation, it's on there, hop on over. Has anyone been in um, an SEO session in the past year? Has anyone sat in? How many of you feel like this? Go huh. back. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go back this slide? Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, it has been a year. Uh, you know, we, we've had all these changes. You know, first there was Panda, and don't let these cute little animals fool you. They are not cute and endearing. They are terrible. Um, you know, there was Panda that was dealing with content duplication, bad content. There was Penguin dealing with links, and all these things are happening, and you're like, what the hell? I just thought I was following the rules, and now there's Hummingbird, who he doesn't even match the color scheme, so I don't know where he came from. But, I mean, it's a big impact for SEO. Um, you know, a while ago, you know, there were changes every now and then, and there were these big updates. They're happening all the time. Hummingbird impacts 90% of searches. That's a lot. And really, it's geared to make your lives better as searchers. But what else is happening? Someone mentioned in the last session, this not provided. How frustrating. You're going to take away my keyword data? You know, it's slated to hit 100% by the end of the year. Um, so any of you who are tracking your keywords for organic search data in analytics, you don't have access to that anymore. Well, we'll talk a little bit brief, a little bit later, briefly about how you can go about getting some of this data. What else? Authorship. How many of you are seeing these in your search results? Ah. Sometimes there are people you don't even know, and you're like, I don't even know who I'm connected to you, but you are in my search results. Um, this is a big deal. It also goes to schema. Um, there are these changes that are happening that Google wants you to be giving them as much data as you can. Um, links aren't working, and you know why? Because people like me and people who have worked in the SEO industry for a while kind of ruined that. Um, search engines can't look at links and say, all right, this is 100% saying that this is a good site. It's not. So what they're trying to do is look at people and start establishing authority through people and sites versus just links. As I mentioned, um, you know, I know when I started there were a couple big updates and it was every couple years and there were names for them because it was like, holy crap, what just happened? Everything's different. Is anyone, is anyone familiar with the Mozcast forecast? What this is, is it tracks fluctuations in search results. So it has a specific set of sites it's tracking, specific set of queries, and it gives a forecast of you know, how, how much are the search results fluctuating, how much are they changing. This is the past 30 days. This is a big deal. And it also goes to the reason that you need fresh content on your site and you need to be paying attention. Um, you know, it, this is a big deal. It's changing all the time, and what you see isn't what I see isn't what he sees. Everyone's search results are varied. This is probably my favorite quote um, that just happened. Um, Matt Cutts was at PubCon last week. Um, this week, actually. Um, this is a key indicator of what's happening, you guys. The word search engine isn't anywhere in the statement. They want to give you the data. What does this mean? This is a Google search result for the Boston Red Sox. It is giving you the date of the game. It is giving you scores. It is giving you news. It is giving information. And not anywhere in the top result is it pointing you anywhere else. So it's taking all this great data that publishers have created, all this great information, and it's putting it onto Google search results, right? The more people they keep on their site, the more money they make. And it is it's a big impact. How many of you thought you'd see Bing in a slide about SEO? <laughs> Bing is actually coming back in, and this is the reason. Bing has 17.9% market share, which may not seem like a lot compared to you know, the 69% that Google has. This has continually increased every year. More importantly, they have 
integrations with Twitter and Facebook. Bing's search results are pulling social data to give you relevant information. That's a big deal because you know where people are on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> this is me. I, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's like one thing after the other. And, ah, you know, it's crazy. But at the end of the day, go to the basics. Um, at the end of the day, the basics are what make a good SEO program. You have your keywords, you have your content, and you have your links. How you go about getting those things is what has to shift. But it goes to these three things. Go back to the basics, and you'll have a great SEO program. So when thinking about keywords, you know, why are they, why are they so important? And the answer is, keywords drive everything you do, right? Um, it drives your content campaigns. It drives your conversion. You know, any content you're creating to drive conversions and sales. You need to understand what people are looking for. It helps you understand your user and your audience. You know, you need to be aware of what's said in the industry, what people are looking for when they're coming to your site. What they're looking for when they're not coming to your site, and how you can write about that to get them to come to your site. Um, so just briefly, um, on this idea of not provided, um, it sucks. You know, it really does suck. But at the end of the day, you still can kind of piece together data. And you do have this data available, and make sure that you are hooked up into Webmaster Tools. Um, Google and Bing both offer Webmaster Tools, and what you can look at is top landing pages. And when you look at landing pages in Webmaster Tools, you have some of this keyword data. And then go into your analytics and fill in some of that data. And looking at your analytics top landing page for that specific page, start filling in where is that not provided data coming from, because this is giving you some of that information. So if you know a specific landing page converts really well, this data in Webmaster Tools can give you some of that, some of that keyword data that you so, you know, it's still there, it's just kind of appealing to that too. In terms of, you know, identifying keyword, keyword research, um, I'm going to give a couple tools and a couple different ways to go about that. Um, AdWords Keyword Tool, everyone's probably the most familiar with. Um, they changed it to Keyword Planner. You know, it kind of does the same thing. Um, basically, you put in a keyword or a site and they will give you a list of keywords and what the search volume is around that. Uber Suggest is another tool. Um, it's pretty cool. What it does is it'll take that core keyword and just append other search variations. Um, so it can help you kind of create that list and see what are some of those more long tail terms that people are looking for. Social mention. Um, one thing I should note is that SEO and social are really becoming more intertwined. Um, so social is becoming just as important as your search and it's an impact, impacting your search. So social mention, what that does is it tracks blogs, it tracks tweets, um, different things, and it'll kind of show you, if you put in a keyword, it'll show you what people are saying. Google Trends, um, if you're looking for specific insights into a keyword. <laughs> okay. So if you're looking for specific insights into a keyword, it'll show you how something's trending. Um, is it moving up? Are people looking for it? It'll give you other ideas. Same thing with Topsy. Topsy's mostly for Twitter, um, so it'll give you what people are looking for. Um, also, when you're typing things in, you probably notice that they're filling in that data for you, right? They're showing you what are those top searches? What are people looking for? Don't ignore that. You know, that, that's important because if no one else is answering that query, you can be. Um, same thing related. Related searches at the bottom, I'm sure you see it. Um, and then, of course, YouTube has their own keyword tool. Don't discount that. Um, YouTube, they, you know, it's, it's deemed as the second largest search engine. People are on it, they're searching, they're searching random things, I realize, so maybe it might not have what you need, um, but there's a lot of keyword data in there. So once you have this keyword data, you need to understand what it means. Right? So it's fine to have this great list of keywords, but what does it mean? You know, are they the right keywords? And that goes to keyword intent. You need to know what people actually are looking for when they're searching a keyword. Um, and Google can be a big help for this, because when you search for something, look at the search results to see what do they think are the best results? What do they think people are searching for? Is it a video? Is it a plugin? 
Right? So looking at, you know, I googled WordPress plugin just to see what, what it was. Would it bring me up plugins? Would it bring me up lists of plugins? Would it bring me news stories? And it gave me a little bit of everything. So if I'm trying to rank for that, if I'm trying to show up, I can look at these to decide, all right, well, I have a plugin, so maybe that's my best chance. But you can also see that there's news about WordPress plugins. There's posts, so maybe you write a post about it. So there's different ways that you can use that keyword data you know, to start focusing on your content. Um, just a key takeaway, a couple key takeaways for keywords. Um, I mean, each of these topics, we could spend you know, an hour a piece, multiple hours a piece just going over them, but you know, research, research, research. The main thing is understanding what your users are looking for, what your potential customers are looking for. And then once you know those keywords, what it means. You need to make sure you're hitting them at the right time, you know, in the buying cycle. Whatever that is for your business, there's these different terms that you need to know what they're searching. And then go forth and create your content, right? So all of these keywords lead to your content strategy and your link building strategy. Another fantastic quote. Um, this is actually just more of information. You don't need to really read this, but Google has this thing where fresh content matters. Right? They're going to showcase fresh content, specifically in cases where maybe it's a new topic um, or where people aren't filling that void. So they're going to show what's new. Um, and that's important to websites. This is a client. Um, this is their blog. Over a two-year time span, this is their total traffic, and this is their search traffic. This is why fresh content matters. They went from 200 organic visitors a month to over 10,000 visitors a month in two years. It started slow. You know, we started by adding a post a week. Then we were adding five posts a week, probably around this area. And you can see, that's a big deal, right? I mean, for them, that is a huge amount of traffic, even total traffic. Um, spikes are just if we did like an infographic push or something like that, where you know, there's a big spike in total traffic. But you can see the impact that fresh content has on organic search, and it's really important. So when you're thinking about your content, you know, specific to SEO, um, one of the biggest things, and, and you mentioned Hummingbird. The thing with Hummingbird is it wants to answer questions. Um, it's focused on answering those questions that people are asking. Be the content that answers those questions. Um, what are your users' needs? What are they looking for? And write that content because you have a much, much better chance of showing up if you're answering the question that person needs. Um, Use your employees. So one of the biggest things we hear is, well, I just don't have time. I don't have time to write about blog posts. I don't have anything to write about, which is a lie. You can write about anything. Use your employees. Um, one of the things that we do is we actually require members of our team to write one blog post a month as part of their development. Um, it's good to talk about training. You know, it's good to talk about what they're doing and actually put it to paper some of the things they're learning. Customers. Customers love being talked about, right? Yay, you're giving them a link, you're talking about them, you're promoting them. You know, throw your customer a bone, you know, do a spotlight on them, um, have them guest post. Don't overlook that. You know, they can add some really valuable stuff um, that's useful to your visitors as well. But don't be af afraid to curate. Um, I sat in a session yesterday um, about extending your blog reach. I mean, this was part of it, right? Sometimes you don't have that much to write about, but see what else is out there. Um, he had talked about looking at a specific news story and commenting on that, right? Writing a short blog post about what the impact of that means for your users. Um, it's easy, you know, you, you don't have to spend eight hours writing a post, but it's something to write about. It's something that's interesting and timely. And like I said, keep it fresh. Um, you know, I know that everyone can't write 20 posts a week, but you know, you can, you can continually do something. So when you're thinking about writing content, you know, this is sort of what I was alluding to before, but when we're thinking about a specific keyword you know, for a client, how are we going to rank in a specific search result? And so we'll look at it, we'll look at a search and say, all right, well, it's white papers that are ranking, it's blog posts that are ranking, um, it's images. And that can help drive your content strategy because now you know what people are actually looking for. A couple of tools. Um, Zamanta is an awesome plugin. 
Um, it'll give you images, it'll give you related news stories. Um, it works with pretty much all browsers. Um, and it's just a simple little sidebar. It comes in, says you should use this image, you should use this story. Um, also, if you want to do any advertising, go ahead. What is this? Zamanta. Z E M A N T A. Like I said, at the end of this presentation, there's a list of all the tools mentioned, um, and on the site, there's links to all of them. It's a important piece. Um, it's great, and if you're interested in advertising, they do actually have this. So the people who are in this list are paying to be in it, but tons of great stories, pretty affordable. Um, edit flow. If you have multiple authors on a blog, this is excellent. It allows you to set permissions, there's a calendar, due dates, edit function. Um, just great for people who are, have you know, a number of people writing for their site um, and need, you know, need to stay organized. It's really important when you embark on a blog process that you have an editorial calendar. Um, otherwise, there's no accountability. Um, and it's very easy to just say, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going to write this week. <laughs> um, Storify is a content curation platform. So if you're sitting at this event and people are tweeting, people are writing posts about it, you can just pull that content. It has some great feeds. You can do some searches. Pull it in and stick it on your site with some additional content. Um, very cool platform, free, easy to use. Why is fresh content ranked differently on Bing and Google? For example, I just put in my keywords on Google and on Bing. On Bing, for all my keywords, my blog comes out first. But on the other, on Google, it comes out like fourth or fifth for the fresh content. Yeah, um, Bing and Google are very different in how they show search results. I'm oh, sorry, I was supposed to remind everyone that if you want to comment, use the microphone. Sorry. Should I repeat that? I already messed up. <laughs> well, she, she asked how, why Google and Bing are are showing different results. And the answer is that one, their algorithms are different. Um, how they rank things are different. Um, you know, like I said, Google is pulling, oh, well, I haven't said it yet, I guess. For more personalized data, Bing is pulling social data and some general data. Um, yeah, so how they show things is different. Yeah, because on Google, the sites that beat me were professional restaurants. I blog about vegan and uh, food and sightseeing. So if you put in the words vegan, Casablanca or vegan Fez Morocco. Uh, the social media is what ranks on Bing. That's why I come up number one. But on Google, they pull the professional restaurants. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so yeah, I mean, the content is it's so important. I can't stress it enough. It's it's the essence of your SEO campaign. It's like, what, what is going to make you successful? I'm having a heck of a time talking. Start with what you know. Um, like I said, when you don't know what to write about, think about what it is you know. What are you an expert at? Probably your business. You know, what are the things that you know your customers need? Um, one post at a time. Like I said, you, you don't have to be writing five posts a week. You don't. You, know, you can be updating just a piece of content on your site. It doesn't always have to be a blog. Um, and have a goal. You know, measure how your content is performing. Is it getting shares? Um, is it getting traffic? Is it generating you know, rankings? Is it, is it showing up in search results? And repeat that. Right, the easiest way, you know, Christina just gave this great presentation about using data and optimization. Use that information. Use the blog posts that are doing well. Look at if there's a pattern. Um, what do people like? And kind of repeat that, right? It, it sounds easy, but... And then we have link building. Um, they love each other, right? It's so cute. Um, but what does that have to do with link building? <laughs> Link building is about relationships, and I'm so tired of hearing people say that, but it is the truth. Um, link building is no longer going out, submitting your site to directories, and getting 100 links. Um, it is no longer about going and spamming forums and blogs and whatever else. You need good, solid links. And in order to do that, you have to have relationships with those sites. You have to be <laughs> able, you know, you can't just email them and say, hey, I'd love a link on your site. Which sounds preposterous, but it used to work. Um, it's, it's about relationships now, and it's about understanding, you know, what can you give them? You know, what is your value to that site? Why would they want to link to you? So the easiest places to start. Um, start with who you know. Um, you know, partners, distributors, associations you're a part of, right? Are you a member of something? Um, people you meet here, right? You know, have them post on your site. Um, or have that post on there, you post on their site, get yourself a link. It's who you know, right? And it's the easiest place to start because it's relevant to your site, 
Um, and, and there's not a lot of work because that relationship is already there. Like I said, stay relevant. Again, you used to just be able to put your link wherever and it didn't matter. That doesn't count. Um, it has to be relevant for your site, to your site to matter. You should be in the same industry. There should be some relation between your site and the site linking to you. Um, like I said, make it worth their while. You know, when you're going out and you're finding a site that you're like, I want a link on this site, what are you going to do for them? Right? Why should they? Why should they link to you? Um, what is the value for them? You know, you can offer a piece of content maybe that's unique and helpful to their users. Um, maybe it's an infographic, maybe it's a photo, whatever it is, there has to be some value of why they want to link to you. This is so important. Don't be an idiot. Um, you see link campaigns gone wrong all the time, right? Where someone emails someone and they know someone and then they send it to their, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. Um, there are whole sites dedicated to, you know, terrible outreach emails. Just don't do it. <laughs> Be targeted in your link outreach, right? That's why I said just start with people you know and kind of build from there. And look at your referral sources to see what's currently linking to you, right? What kind of sites are currently sending traffic your way? And then go find, you know, other sources like that. But yeah, just, just don't be an idiot. Um, a couple tools. SEO Moz Open Site Explorer is great for finding competitor links. You can put in any URL and it'll spit out you know, their backlinks. Um, it's good to know who's linking to you as well. Um, clout, you know, people, people kind of make fun of clout, but you know, there's some good data, data in there. If you want to identify influencers on a specific topic, a lot of these people have blogs, right? They have blogs and that's why they have this clout. Um, so if you go in and you search a particular keyword, it'll give you top influencers. And you can start looking to see, all right, well, you know, is this site relevant? How can I, how can I get involved? How can I start a relationship with this person? Um, this business insider one you can't really see, but they have an opportunity to be a contributor, and most sites do. Um, a lot of sites do, I guess. Guest posting isn't, isn't over. Um, Whatever you hear, guest posts still are great. You just have to be more specific in what you're doing right. Um, you just can't guest post on some site that has nothing to do with you. Um, take a look at take a look at relevant sites to your industry and see do they offer you know guest posts? Do they allow contributions? Um, and go in with an idea. Right. The key to any good guest post is going in with an idea that you can sell to them. It's not up to them to come up with the topic. You go in and say, hey, I'm interested in writing about this. They can say, all right. Or they can say, oh, we already have that, but what about this? So just a couple ways to you know, start with your building campaign. Um, as I mentioned, look for brand mentions. A lot of times people will mention your brand or include your logo and they won't link to you. Um, easy place to start. Um, you know, just kind of do a Google search for your business name, your name, whatever that is. And if they don't link to you, just reach out and say, hey, you know, I really appreciate you know, your, your mention. If you wouldn't mind adding a link. Um, like I said, partners and associations and competitors. This last bullet is really important. Um, think like a PR person, right? PR people spend lots of time um, going and looking at what that site is and really understanding what it is they're about to pitch. Do the same thing. Um, just because you're passionate about your site doesn't mean anyone else is. So think about that when you're, when you're pitching. Now, I'm going to give you guys some good stalking tools here. You have to promise that you're not going to go and ruin it, okay? Three plugins, three tools. Um, Reportive is a Gmail plugin. It is the coolest thing. If you have someone's email, you put it in, and all this information about them comes up. It makes doing your research really easy. So that's the one all the way to the left. So you can find someone's, all their social profiles. If they have other email addresses, it'll show that. Um, it'll show their position, where they're located. Yesware is actually a social, um, I'm sorry, a sales plugin. It's also for Gmail. And you can track if people opened your emails. Um, you know, Outlook, Outlook kind of does the same thing, but it's a, free, it's a free tool that it's just a plugin for Gmail. So you can see, did that person actually open my email? If not, maybe you need to send it. If they did and they ignored it, well, maybe cross that up with this. Um, Buzzstream. If you find a site, you're like, this is a great site, how do I reach out to get included on this? You can put it in the website and it'll pull all the email addresses for you. So you can start to see who are people and what are their email addresses and when you're building that strategy. Okay, so your speaker notes, that's quite speaker note.com. Because I don't need to write it down. Sure. Yeah, 
It's at caseygillette.com or it's on SlideShare. So, I mean, just some cool ways to, you know, supplement your outreach. And here it is. Um, Google Plus, which I'm sure everyone is not a big fan of. Um, what's important to know about Google Plus, you guys, is that this is search. Google Plus isn't just the social platform. It's your Gmail. It's Google search results. It's your search history. It's YouTube. Anything you're doing while you're signed in, is considered Google Plus. They tout these huge amount, huge numbers of users. People are doing all this stuff, right? When you're signed in, you're doing all of these other things. Um, and this is why it's a big deal. These are Google Plus search results in the search results. <laughs> it goes back to them just keeping you on their property. Uh, this stuff is all there. And so it's important for you to be establishing these connections and to be that person. You want to be that person in the search result. Um, you know, I searched for something the other day. I, I was traveling to Chicago and I searched hotels in Chicago and I had already booked a hotel in Chicago and it was in my Gmail. You know what came up on my screen? Here is the hotel you are currently staying at next week. Yeah. Very Google Plus matters. I cannot stress it enough. Um, at minimum, at minimum, set up your authorship. Um, connect Google Plus to your company page. Connect your site with your Google Plus page. It's so important. Um, fill in your information. Google Local doesn't exist anymore. You don't have local pages. It's all contained in this. Make sure you have your hours. Make sure you have images. Make sure you have your company description, your products. As much information as you can put in there, put in there. <laughs> and create relevant circles and engage with them. Um, circles, they're just a way to, you know, group of people, group a set of people who have specific interests. And there's some pretty cool ways to use them. Um, and communities. Communities are the key to Google+. And this is why. You think people aren't doing it, they are. This is a client, uh, a client of ours that we're doing our Google+, Plus platform for. This is the other day. 169 plus months and 16 shares. Even when someone plus ones, though, this is still showing up in all of their user speeds. So 169 people and their friends all just saw this post with our brand. That's a big deal. They also, oh, can you unfriend someone on Google Plus? I don't use it and I don't want it because I have Gmail. Yeah. I keep getting emails that people join me and they're strangers I don't know and it's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you can change your settings. Okay. Or you can just ignore them. <laughs> the other cool thing about Google Plus is ripples. So you can see who's sharing your content. Google's worried about personalization, or, or protect privacy, sorry. Google's worried about privacy, but you can go in and see all the people who are sharing your content and their pages. Um, you can click on these and go to their page. But what you can do with this information, which is really cool, is if you see a set of people who are consistently sharing your content, the next time you put out a piece of content, you can send an email to that select group of people saying, you know, I just posted this content. A um, couple things to know. If you're interested in Google Plus, uh, Google Plus, Mark Trappigan is the ultimate person to follow. He has so much great information. He like, lives and dies on it. Um, super smart. Just a great guy to, you know, to learn from. Um, view Ripples. So Ripples, there is a bookmarklet called Ripples. Um, I have it listed in here. But you can see all the people who have shared a specific piece of content. Um, and then there's a brand page audit tool that will tell you how your page, your Google Plus page is doing. Um, site speed, like I said, um, ah, so I started putting together all this stuff about site speed, and then I realized that um, I sat in Chris Fernandini, one of those last names, excellent speaker, and so I just cut what I had, and I'm just going to send you guys the link to this. Um, this matters. This is in 2010 that Google said site speed is impacting rankings. You need to have a fast site. Um, everything Google is doing is for the users, right, and making, giving them a better experience. Um, if your site is slow and not giving them a good experience, they're going to penalize you for that. Um, you can learn how you can improve your site at Google's page, page speed insights. Um, some great data, a lot of it's a little bit high level, but just can kind of get you started. Um, image compression, uh, total cache. Like I said, just go look at this presentation. It's really good. Um, it has a ton of data. I have the link at the end. Sorry, can you say again what the page speed Sure. So Google Page Speed Insights, they're giving you data into how your site is performing. 
Um, and you can actually see it within Google Analytics. So they have sites that are contained in there. Um, and so if you go, it'll show you, here's how you can improve your site. And they break down what is the top reason your site is slow. Here are some things you can do. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't include mobile. Um, oh boy, everyone just has their phone on them, right? <laughs> For most sites, you know, making sure, the key here is just that making sure people can access your site um, through desktop and through mobile on their smartphone. What is the action you want them to take and can they do it on their phone? Will they do it on their phone? Even the most basic thing, you know, if you're a B2B company or lead gen, make sure they can click to call. Make sure they can call you, they can see your phone number. Um, if you are having people fill out a form, make sure they can fill out that form. <coughs> make sure there aren't a hundred fields for them to fill out because no one's going to do that. Um, and, and you know, there were, I think there were some other sessions about you know mobile and responsive design. So it is important. It's so super important um, for local sites, especially um, if you are a local business. The impact on search is much greater than you know if you're a national business or a global business. Because people are generally searching for something specific to where they are. And even if they're not, Google will think they are, so they'll show those local results instead. Um, all right, so here are some plugins just to have. Um, Yoast SEO, you know, I think most people are familiar with it. It pretty much does everything. Um, I heard someone earlier ask about archives and tags and categories. This will block those for you. Um, you don't really want those things live. Uh, they're kind of just duplicate content of all the posts you already have. Um, there's settings in Yoast that you can just go in and block those, so only the main posts are what's being indexed. Pretty important. Um, and a lot of this stuff is set up for you when you download it, so it already has the best practice stuff kind of already in there. I mentioned Total Cache, Smush It, Edit Flow. Um, I put Shareaholic because I use it and I like it. Whatever that share bar is that you use, the whole point here is make it easy for people to share your content. Um, it's the key to link building, it's the key to search success right now, um, and, and you need to make it easy for people to share that content that you're working so hard to create. And lastly, a Google sitemap. Um, there's Google XML sitemap generator that will create that sitemap for you, but you can then submit to Google Webmaster Tools and Bing Webmaster Tools. Um, they don't really need it as much anymore. You know, they're pretty good at indexing your site. Um, they're pretty fast, but it's good to have, and they'll give you feedback on how your site's performing. There's also an excellent resource, has like 45 SEO plugins. You know, take a look at that. These are all the tools I mentioned. Like I said, all the links are contained on my site. References, um, these are some really great stories. The PubCon interview with Matt Cutts, his session. Um, the MozCast metrics. One of the things I didn't mention, um, there is a phenomenal blog post on Moz.com that showcases over 101 different search results, types of search results. Um, and it goes to Google trying to keep you on their site, right? Um, it goes to the Hummingbird update. Take a look at it, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, <coughs> updated info on Bing. Uh, Google Plus, or I'm sorry, yeah. Google Plus study, so Eric Enga did a study on Google Plus and its impact, take a read. Um, and then lastly, Chris's speaker deck. And that's it. Five minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Who has questions? All right. I don't know where I start. Do you know of any limitations that WordPress has with um, structured data? I, for example, I have a site that has recipes on it, yeah. and um, when I I have the structured data marked up in there, and when I look at it in the uh, as a little webmaster testing tool. Yeah. It shows the thumbnail, it shows the little stars for the rating. Yeah. There's no errors on the oh. testing tool at all, but it still doesn't show that stuff in Google search. That could just take some time. Um, like I said, make sure, this is, it's so annoying, just make sure that you're hooked up, bless you, to, do you hooked up to your Google Plus page, you have authorship set up, everything's all set up. Sometimes it just takes time. We had a client who implemented authorship, and it took almost three months for it to show up. So even though they've already called the site, yeah, yeah. it will still it can take time. Take even more time. Yeah. And it can vary on the types of search results. So it may just be specific to a recipe, but maybe only then it will show. Um, but keep keep doing that. It's going to have. Our <laughs> shows you mentioned on your site. Yeah. 
Yeah. I've been putting links uh, to my company at the bottom of the websites that I've been building for the last yeah. X years. Yeah. But in listening to you talk, if, if my client site's not relevant to me, yeah. are my links now going to waste at the bottom unless they created by? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And part of Penguin was cracking down on those types of links. Um, so I'm assuming you weren't hit. <laughs> but they're trying to get away from that. Um, so should we not add those links to the bottom of client sites anymore? You know, I, I, I want to say, say yes, you should do it because you created that site and you should get credit for it. Um, but maybe just add a no-follow tag to it to be safe. Um, and that just tells the search engine, don't, don't follow. Don't well, do follow. you get penalized if you don't put the no-follow? You could be, yeah. But I receive, for example, in this case, I receive uh, visitors through those. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, absolutely, right? And that's why it's relevant. So one of the keys to that is that it can almost be look at, looked at as a paid link um, because you're putting on something that the client paid for, or you're, you know, I don't know if that makes sense. They're looking at it as a sponsored link. And if you're not telling them that it's a sponsored link or that, you know, that person didn't willingly put it in their content, that you just put it there, yeah, they'll tell us for you. My question uh, is that I still get the impressions from my client. Do they have to submit, or do I have to submit regularly to the search engines? I no, and that's the thing with Google XML sitemaps. They're great to have. Um, make sure you put it into Webmaster Tools. Google updates so frequently, and they, they update so frequently now. If you were to look at your server logs, they probably hit your site at least once a day. And um, Bing and Yahoo does the same thing? I'm sorry? Bing and Yahoo does yeah, the same thing? same thing. Yahoo actually uses Bing. Oh. Okay. So Yahoo's pulling Bing search results. Who needs the mic? I do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Nothing else? One more? You want to see me dance? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. I will be outside if anyone has any questions.